right, it's your boy Melo from Sap Live, man. I'm here with Kelly and Aaron Cole. Aaron, going on? What's going on, man? Aaron signed to the new Truth label, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. And told you 15. Mm hmm. So, and you're his father as well, right? Definitely. You're the manager. So, Aaron, as a 15 year old, how do you deal with, like, have you had any troubles with peer pressure or anything at yeah. that age being saved? Definitely. Um, I feel like. When I was like 11, 12, um, I really got my first encounter with Christ, you know, like real, real encounter with Christ, knowing who he is. And um, the year before, I feel like the reason I got that is the year before, um, I start dealing with a lot of peer pressure. People telling me, oh, yo, you're not nothing. You know, you're just a little church boy, nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? So it was tempting me to do certain things that I didn't really want to do. It wasn't in my heart. And so I didn't really, I didn't do it. I didn't give in to it. So I just, yeah, tell all the youth, like, you don't have to, you don't have to do all that stuff to, you know, to be cool, you know, and to be, you know, a good Christian and a good person. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's when I got my true encounter with Christ and uh, really saw, you know, who he was and how great he was. You know what I'm saying? And how he can use me, you know, to reach youth, you know, and talk about these different things. You know what I'm saying? And now, now I feel like I'm making an impact. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm definitely making an impact with the, um, with God on my side. Yeah, for sure. What, what were some of the things you did, especially being an artist on to the truth? Uh -huh. What were some of the things you did to keep yourself focused? Like, mm -hmm. instead of going through the peer pressures, what are some of the things you did to keep your mind off of all the things that everybody else is doing? Definitely. Um, I would say uh, reading, you know, reading in the word a lot. That definitely keep you focused and keep you humble, you know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like some of my, you know, close, close friends, they keep me humble and keep me focused. Like, sometimes if I get too much of a big I'm head, they be like... Truth. They be like, they be like, yo, they be like, yo, 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 you're not nothing, you know what I'm saying? You're not nothing without Christ, you know what I'm saying? So that always keeps me humble and keeps me going right back down, you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, did I answer your question right? Yeah, definitely. Cool, cool, cool. Um, also, I noticed that your father's your manager. Yeah. So that's a lot of what's missing in the urban area. Definitely. So what you think, is that a major part of why you're so focused in your situation? I feel like so, yeah, definitely. I feel like so. He's a big influence in my life, for sure. A lot of people, a lot of people tell me uh, don't take it for granted, and I don't, for sure, yeah. So Gully, as his father, like, what kind of role are you playing in, in being an artist? It, do, do you separate the two? Or you? Um, yes, and it's a hard separation um, sometimes because as a parent, you want to you want your child comfortable, you want to keep them safe, but as an artist and and managing him, I know if I keep him comfortable, he won't grow. So it's always a, a internal battle with me, like you know, as the dad, I want him good, I want him happy, but I know if I don't throw him like the baby eagle, if I don't throw him out the nest and where he has to fly, he won't grow. So it's, it's definitely a struggle, but yeah, we, we try to separate as much as possible. So what gave you, what gave you the momentum to actually be his manager and not let somebody else do it? Um, the, the cool thing is I actually got saved at a Christian hip hop concert um, when he was three years old. So when I got saved, I actually um, started recording Christian hip hop in the home and that was my little man, so he was right there with me. And he started out just mimicking all of the artist's lyrics. So he was speaking word at three years old, not even knowing it. And me noticing him going around the house rapping lyrics, I said, man, I gotta write him something. So I wrote him a rap called Jesus is the Rock. And from then on, at age four, he released his first album. His first concert was in front of about 500 to 1,000 people and tore it down. Scared as a mother. I was scared of him. <laughs> scared as a yo. You know, yo, it was this what happened. This what happened. I was on stage. You know, I'm three. You know, I'm adrenaline pumping. Um, I got my uncle and my pops beside me. 500 people. I'm like, oh man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going crazy. Like I had one verse on the song. I rap everybody's verse. I didn't stop. I was out of breath, running back and forth. But it was yeah. much fun for sure. Just yeah. to get it out of there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, definitely. So, it was. It was definitely just a progression of just following the spirit and and seeing this is where God has called him. And then around the time when he had his his personal encounter with Christ, where he had to learn and, and rely on Christ, 
and um, and grow, that's when we really say, hey, let's roll, you know? And the biggest thing, go back, going back to your previous question, the main focus in, in us separating um, father from manager is I, I make sure I let him know no matter what happens, I got him, like I got his back. You know, fall or no fall, and to get, get deeper, you know, people try to put pressure on him to be perfect. It's like, dude, you ain't gotta worry about that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, we were talking about, he's saving himself for marriage. And we were talking about this at, um, in the car or something. And somebody asked me, what are you gonna do if he falls? And he asked it, I said, I ain't gonna do nothing. Cause at the end of the day, it's his life. I'm just gonna love him. Yeah. I'm gonna be there. What Christ does to us. You, exactly, the ultimate Example is Christ, you know, no matter what he shows us grace and not try to make us feel guilty And that's that's one of the biggest issues in the church They trying to win people with guilt instead of grace and instead of sharing the good news You know if you're headed if you headed out that door and say hey There's a man out there with a gun if you go out that door. He's gonna kill you But if I share some good news with you and say hey, but if you go this way you'll be safe. Yeah. And too many Christians, too many churches, they, they try to scare people into getting saved instead of loving them. Because at the end of that addiction, at the end of that sin, is a lot of pain. And a lot of them don't know until they go through it. Yeah, definitely. So as an artist, this is a beautiful thing that you told the story about your father. Yeah. Because you know, it's not the typical story of I'm not, I have a father, sure, I'm yeah, selling yeah. drugs, I Definitely. had all this dramatic thing. Yeah, but yeah. from your perspective, it's positive. I right, have right. my dad there. So yeah. it's gonna show more creativity to your work. Right. So instead of it being so negative with what you're bringing into the table, what mm -hmm. is gonna inspire your upcoming record that you're doing now? What's gonna inspire? What is your inspirations besides God? Like, when uh -huh. you're writing, what's the emotions that mm -hmm. we're going? Um, when I'm writing and I'm, you know, inspired, I get inspired by, you know, other artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, listening to their music, um, watching them in the studio, you know, I love watching behind the scenes stuff. So, yeah, so definitely that inspires me more. And uh, I know you said not God, but reading, you know, yeah. reading that definitely inspires, like, the stories, yo. The stories is like, you can bring those up to date and be a crazy song, you know what I'm saying? So, definitely, like, reading and stuff inspires, too. Like, I got a song about a story. It's gonna be dope. It's gonna be real dope. So tell us about this upcoming project. What um, should we expect? Hopefully at the um, end of this year, I got a single. It's gonna come out on Mixed Bag and all that good stuff. And uh, I just I dropped the EP um, in the summer called 15 is a New 15 on iTunes and all that stuff. But um, this is gonna be like the real, you know, introduction to the world on the national level on the Truths label. So that'll be coming out sh hopefully at the end of this year and then album. You know, get it next year, like May or something like that. Yeah, hopefully so. Yeah. Y'all touring already with the truth? Um, hopefully we got it to a working. Hopefully okay. we get it, we get it to a popping for sure. So just tell everybody where they could look up your music and all your info. Um, I'm on iTunes, um, Amazon, Google Play, all that good stuff. Um, you can follow me on at I am Aaron Cole on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. You can follow at um, I'm Aaron Cole, just Aaron Cole. Yeah, my name, definitely. What's your website? Oh, www.iamericode.com. Yeah, yeah. All right, it's Mellow, Sap Live, Aaron Kelly Cole. Mellow, uh, number seven. That's so pretty much <laughs> Yo, what's up, y'all? It's your boy, Aaron Cole. New sign needs a mixed bag, and you're watching Sap Live. Take that, take that.